All right, here uh, in Louisville at 4th and Hill. <laughs> All right, 4th and Hill. I, uh, there's one part of the Occupy series pamphlet in Noam Chomsky that I wanted to reread, and then I was going to finish up this chapter in the 50th Law, so it would be the 50th Law 5. So I'm kind of combining two videos into one video. So the Occupy protest, this is what you do if you're arrested during the Occupy protest. If you're arrested during the Occupy protest, watch this video so you know exactly what to do. Occupy. So the Occupy protest support, this is written by the National Lawyers Guild. And the National Lawyers Guild is who you're going to need to contact. The National Lawyers Guild are the folks who have been on the front lines of this thing. So they're the ones that you need to contact. So, okay, I'm just going to read it. Thousands of people have been arrested exercising their freedom of speech in assembly while participating in Occupy actions. If you are someone you know needs legal assistance or has been victim of excessive police force or brutality at a protest or gathering, contact the National Lawyers Guild. A nonprofit federation of lawyers, legal workers, and law students who join in at Occupy protests and monitor police activity on the street and in jail. So that's what the National Lawyers Guild, that's what they do. Nonprofit federation of lawyers, legal workers, and law students. Nonprofit, legal, left, work, students. Okay. So the National Lawyers Guild, NLG, has been providing in invaluable legal advice to movement folks who get inadvertently arrested at protests, as well as those who consciously commit civil disobedience. So the question is, what laws and police practices should I know about? Okay, what laws and practices should you know about? Well, know this. You have a First Amendment right. Every American, every Louisvillean, every Kentuckian, everybody in America has got a First Amendment right that protects the right to protest legally, peacefully. If you protest peacefully, you're allowed to do that. That's allowed in this country. You're allowed to stand outside an office with a sign. You're allowed to do that. You got a right to hand out leaflets. Here's, here's a piece of paper. Here's a piece of paper. Here's a piece of paper. Here, here's a piece of paper. Oh, you don't want it? All right. You're allowed to pass out flyers. You're allowed to rally on a sidewalk. Set up a little thing on a sidewalk. Don't eat at this store. Don't put your money into this bank. Don't go into this person's house. But uh, whatever you want to protest, you can protest anything you want to protest. You can also set up a moving picket line. So uh, as long as you're not stopping the flow of traffic, so you can set up a moving picket line where it just goes back and forth, back and forth, uh, like in a little circle or whatever, which is noticeable. More people notice something like that. It looks militant. And it's a, it's a demonstration. You're allowed to have demonstrations. Public demonstrations are legal in America. No matter what anybody tells you, it's the law. And law enforcers should be enforcing the law, including our Bill of Rights. First Amendment. We got First Amendment rights in this country. Rights. On the books. The rule of law is supposed to apply to everybody. So... I'd like to see a police officer defend somebody, actually, who's using their free speech, since that is legal. So you can set up a moving line, pass out leaflets, you can rally on a sidewalk, just as long as you're not blocking building entrances or more than half of the sidewalk. So you can't stop people from going in, and you can't stop people from using the sidewalk, but you can use an appropriate space for you and your comrades and your buddies to have a protest party. The law requires a permit to march on the street, rally in a park with 20 or more people, or use electronic sound amplification. So if you're going to march on the street, if you're going to rally in a park and you got 20 or more people, or if you're going to use electronic sound amplification, amplification, you're going to need to get a permit. You're going to need to get permission from your government. In New York, a mask law makes it unlawful for three or more people to wear a mask, including bandanas. The NYPD aggressively go after that. Here in Louisville, it's been said, I don't know, I haven't seen the words, but you can't wear a Guy Fawkes mask. You're not allowed to wear a 
Yeah, a Guy Fawkes mask. So if I go outside, right, and I'm out in the street, and I got my Guy Fawkes mask on, and we're like, hey, hey, look at me, you know, I got a mask on. And even though during Halloween, I'd be allowed to wear this thing, because in uh, Louisville, the explanation is because the Ku Klux Klan, they want to do rallies and they want to have public demonstrations, which, which they're allowed to do. So if the Klan is allowed to have public demonstrations, that's fine. But the way that the, the law, and this is just all stories, just what I heard, so I have no evidence of this, just hearsay. Uh, but the, um, the law had pr made the Kluxers show their faces. All right, you can go ahead and march on the street, but you're going to show your face. And in a way, I kind of like that. You're going to, you know, say this is what you stand for? Well, let's see who you actually are. Well, if we lived in a real police state, they might take your face, and then they might take your body and put you into Guantanamo Bay. And if you say something wrong on the online or on the Internet, the email address, you know the NSA has got your name. And uh, with the uh, NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, that applies to American citizens. So if they suspect you of being a terrorist, you could be sent to prison. That's the laws on the books. So carrying on. Police will see signs on wooden sticks, metal, or PVC piping. So if you got a wooden stick, metal, or PVC piping, they're going to take your sign away. You're allowed to have a sign with cardboard tubing. The police will not allow placing signs on fences or trees. So you have a sign, it's got to be on cardboard tubing, you can't hang it on a tree, you can't hang it on a fence. The police will not allow placing signs on, on fences or trees. If you have a, hang a banner from a bridge over a highway, you risk arrest for reckless endangerment. So you hang a banner and then get on out of there. Put a banner up from a bridge uh, over a highway and then go. Because if you're around, they can arrest you for reckless endangerment. So, uh, what, what do I do if the police talk to me? Okay, if the police talk to you, you've got a constitutional right to remain silent. Say nothing. Keep it zipped up. If the police try a friendly conversation, you can say nothing and walk away. If the police say, move, or give some other order, you may ask why. But you're not advised to say anything more. Notify a legal observer about the order. If the police ask you to search your, you or your bag, you say no. No, I don't allow you to search. I do not consent to a search. That's the Fourth Amendment laws. I do not consent to a search. If the police search anyways, you have to keep on repeating. I don't consent to search. I don't, I don't consent to this. I don't consent to a search. I don't consent to a search. If you physically interfere with the search, then you risk arrest. If the police question you, including asking your name, you may say nothing and walk away. If the police prevent you from leaving, ask, am I free to go? And if the answer is yes, you may say nothing and walk away. But if they answer no and say, well, I wish to remain silent and I want to talk to a lawyer, and then wait for the police to arrest you or to release you. So if they question you, even if they're asking your name, you may say nothing and walk away. If the police try to keep you from leaving, you can ask them, am I free to go? Can I, am I free to go? What can I do? And actually, the cops are allowed to lie to you in order to get information out of you. So there's really no reason to talk to the police, unless it's your buddy, unless you know the police officer. But if you don't know them, the only thing the cop is trying to get out of you is information in order to try to cause you or your friends trouble. So what can I do to prepare for a possible arrest? Well, you write the guild's phone number on your wrist or your ankle, and you'll call it if you're arrested. Or if you see an arrest, carry in your pocket several quarters to make phone calls and a phone card for possible long-distance calls. Carry a granola bar in your pocket. Food is often missed in jail. Carry in your pocket one photo ID with a good address and do not carry ID with different addresses. Do not carry anything you don't want the police to have, such as phone books or valuables. So write a phone number on your wrist. Make sure you have several quarters in your pocket or a phone card so you can make phone calls. Have a granola bar, so phone cards, quarters, granola bar. Write the phone number on your wrist. Carry a granola bar, since food is often missed in jail. Have one good ID with you, with a good address. So what do I do if I get arrested? 
You're advised to state clearly, I'm going to remain silent. I'm going to remain silent. That's really all you need to say. But I'm going to remain silent and I want to speak to a lawyer. Nope, I'm going to remain silent. I want to speak to a lawyer. Now, I know you're a nice guy and you're trying to be nice, but no. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm going to remain silent. I want to speak to a lawyer. Repeat this to any officer who questions you. Do not believe everything the police say. It is legal for the police to lie to you to get you to talk. When asked, you can give your name and your address, show your photo ID, and allow yourself to be photographed and fingerprinted for the purposes of confirming ID. Refusal to provide ID information will delay your release from jail. Remember your arresting officer's name and badge number. If you get a phone, if you get a phone, call the National Lawyers Guild and give names of other arrestees. Remain calm and prepare yourself for a wait in jail for at least 24 to 36 hours. What happens to me if I'm arrested? If you're arrested, you'll be handcuffed, you'll be driven to a jail or a detention center, and then later taken to court. In the police's discretion, you may be released from jail with a summons or a desk appearance ticket, which is a DAT, which tells you when to return to court. If you're charged with a misdemeanor or a felony, you will more likely go through the system to be arraigned before a judge. This means you'll be in jail for 24 to 36 hours. If they charge you with a misdemeanor or a felony, be prepared to stay in jail for at least 24 hours. Don't talk to anyone but a lawyer about the facts of your arrest. A court employee will interview you about community ties, address, employment, family. This will help the judge determine whether to set your bail or release you on your own recognizance, ROR. And it's okay to answer these questions, just don't talk about your arrest. A lawyer will briefly meet you about your case, get the lawyer's name and phone number. You will be arraigned on the charges against you before a judge. Your lawyer will enter your pleas. When in doubt, plead not guilty. Conditions for release are set, either bail money or ROR. The next court date is scheduled on a court slip for you to keep. You may be offered an adjournment in contemplation of dismissal, ACD. If you agree, your case is adjourned for six months, and if you're not arrested during the six months, the charge is dismissed, and the case is sealed. If you're arrested during the six months, the case can be brought back to court. If this happens, you still have all the rights that you normally have with a criminal case, including the right to trial. So an ACD and an adjournment in contemplation of dismissal is not a plea of guilty. An adjournment in contemplation of dismissal is not a plea of guilty. What do I do if the police knock at my door? Well, if the, anyone knocks, don't, don't open the door. Ask, who are you? If the police ask, what do you want? We just want to talk to you. If they say, if they say they want to come in and talk to you, state, I have got nothing to say. Slide your business card under my door and my lawyer will call you. Move away from the door and then call the National Lawyers Guild. Well, we've got a sort search warrant. You reply, well, if you have a search warrant, slip it under the door. If they, do, if they do, read it to confirm that it's the correct address. If it is, open the door, stand back, and state, I'm going to remain silent. I want to speak to a lawyer. A warrant is sometimes limited to a specific room. Make mental notes of where the police search. If they don't have a warrant, again, reply, I have nothing to say. Slide your business card under the door. We have an arrest warrant. So you reply to that demand across the door. If you have a warrant, slip it under the door. If they do, read it to determine if it's a warrant for your arrest or for somebody else. If it's for you or someone inside, tell them you're coming out, step out, and close and lock the door behind you. And state, I'm going to remain silent and I want to speak to a lawyer. Do not say or do anything else. If the arrest warrant is for someone not inside your home, state the person is not there or doesn't live there and ask for the police to slip a business card under the door. Do not say or do anything else. If you're not a U.S. citizen, there's far greater risk involved if you're arrested and you're not a U.S. citizen. Talk to a lawyer before even coming to the protest and always carry your name and telephone number of an immigration lawyer. Carry any immigration papers you might have, such as your green card, I-94, or work authorization with you. I didn't get a chance to do the 50th law, so I guess this is just the Occupy, but this is what to do in case... You're arrested. If you're arrested, call the National Lawyers Guild and stay firm, stay strong, stand up for your rights, assert your rights. As an American, you got rights in this country. Rule by law. 
There's a reason we had a revolution. There's a reason we got the Bill of Rights. There's a reason why people shed their blood in order so we could be free. So let's stay free, America. Louisville, be smart. Peace.